In this segment, we want to talk about maintaining turf near waterfront property. Today, we're on the MSU campus. We're right on the banks of the Red Cedar River. And one of the simplest principles that we can often discuss when looking at managing turf near a waterfront is how we maintain the height of cut. You can see in the area I'm standing right here, this is the typical height of cut that we maintain many of the grounds here around MSU. This is about two and a half to three inches for the mowing height. Now, as I start to make my way closer to the banks of the Red Cedar River, you can start to see that they've chosen to increase the height of cut. Here we're probably looking at closer to maybe three and a half to four inches in this area. We turn this a stepped buffer height. So we're increasing the height of the cut as we move closer and closer to the water body. Now I'm making my way closer to the Red Cedar River. Hopefully you can see that we're starting to get to an area now where we're not even mowing the turf. We're essentially just letting it grow. They'll come out probably at least a couple times a year and knock it back a little bit, but generally we're just looking at this area is just essentially unmanaged. So we're not mowing it any longer. So we've gone from roughly a three inch cutting height to a four inch cutting height. So now as we get right to the edge of the Red Cedar River, we're not mowing the turf at all. Now, there are several other principles we need to discuss when you look at maintaining waterfront turf. Several, one of the things to include is how steep is the slope as you get closer to the water, whether in this case it's a river or whether you're on a lakefront property. Here the slope is actually rather gradual as we start to get closer to the Red Cedar River. If you're on a steeper slope, and you have clay soils, you're gonna to wanna to keep this in mind even with your irrigation practices so you don't end up having maybe even soil particles or if you would apply any fertilizer actually running off into the water body. So keep the slope in mind and also keep what type of soil you have. If you have clay or if you have something that's gonna drain much more quickly such as sand. Other things to consider is in addition to this mowing height buffer that we've described here, is to look at a fertilizer buffer. Generally, we would like to say stay at least 10 foot back from the edge of the water, if not 15, when you're spreading any fertilizer. Uh, refer to your soil test to see if you would require any additional phosphorus. If you don't require phosphorus, certainly don't apply it. We know phosphorus can be a direct input into the water body and can cause eutrophication of those water sources. Choose slow release nitrogen sources near water bodies. Uh, anywhere from maybe 20 to 30 percent slow release nitrogen content in that fertilizer or you can look for things such as natural organic fertilizers which are going to be considered 100 percent slow release. So those are some things to keep in mind as you look at managing turf near a waterfront. One is increasing the height of cut as you get closer to the water. Two would be having a no fertilizer buffer and three take into account the slope as you get closer to the water and also your soil type because that's going to affect how you would irrigate to make sure that we preserve our water quality and still maintain a healthy turf grass stand. Finally, if you would like more information on this topic, refer to our website. We have a bulletin on there called Maintaining Waterfront Turf to Preserve Water Quality.